other things if, if, if you'd like to, but we could sit and talk. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, we, we can, and we can have cookies too. And we can cook them. Yes, yes. That's sweet of you. Oh, well. <laughs> the intros to your pieces were as rich as your pieces. Um, uh, rich? I'm poor, man. I'm not a rich man. He's accusing me. Do you hear the man accuse me of being rich? No. But, but, I'm going well, back to your, your, your piece you, you started out with. Over there at the piano. It was, it was a comment on the... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but but I, I, I knew... Well, some, somehow I heard you say before this evening that that you're relatively new to writing. Uh, is Technical that... writing, I didn't consider writing. I oh, consider, oh, so, so I, I have uh, uh, a resume uh, technically that has about fifty technical articles in it over thirty years. And, and they, they relate to patterns of structure of materials. Wow, that it it, it seems uh, esoteric. These are articles written by excuse me, written for uh, engineers and materials. Yes, right. right. And, like, are you an expert on, on handling plutonium? You don't handle plutonium. Uh, I know. <laughs> you are an expert. <laughs> that's, no, that's what they told me in Los Alamos. You don't handle plutonium, son. Otherwise, otherwise, when you walk out the gate, the bells go off. They ring and then, and then they have to come and, and peel your skin off. When you die, or something oh, God. Like Contamination was not allowed. No, no. It was all over the place, but not allowed. Right, it's recorded. <laughs> so, what what prompted you from having how, how shall I say, either technology, materials, mm -hmm. um, technical writing? What prompted you to to write about the things that that you you read to us just a moment ago? Patterns. Patterns. I realized. Oh, uh, when it took well, I had to, it was a year after I started writing before I realized the generality of what I had done for thirty years, looking cross-sectioning a material, looking at the cast structures, the dendritic uh, arms, and you know, pat, you know, all kinds of forms that materials t take uh, inside interior, and being able to cross-section and examine that and just try to describe those patterns. That that I was simply doing a little piece of little teeny little piece of, of the nature's patterns of, of trying to characterize nature's patterns. But I wasn't. But I couldn't. I wasn't doing it poetically. I had the characterizations were images, and then the description of this shows this is this how this grows, how this crystals grow, and so forth. I mean that kind. Of, that was the result of what I was doing. It came out as articles of that with that kind of emphasis. Mm -hmm. So so the generality I didn't understand of patterns, na nature's patterns, uh, on the nature of things, and the nature of things is that we have patterns for so behavior, you know, for behavior. Right, human behavior and yeah, has its patterns too. Everything right? has pattern, as a pattern, patternistic character, as I see it. So, so if I'm understanding you correctly, um, so the patterns that you saw in nature, you, you saw you can apply that, that same, uh, let's say, degree of observation to human behavior and, and human nature. P patterns in nature at large and patterns in human nature ha have been your, um, your, your venue, your, the, the window that... That, that, that you, took you me into through. the complexity of natural patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, for, we didn't. I didn't look at it that way when I was doing structure of plutonium from a, a weapons from a trigger. <laughs> I didn't think about the generalities. Uh, and neither did I think about the power of, of those things either. Uh, I didn't understand what happened in Hiroshima and when I worked for 15 years. But it was afterwards that I researched that event and understood. Sadness. And it turns out one of my metallurgic heroes was a, de, devised the uh, the the, uh, 
the uh, thing that made plutonium malleable or uh, indeformable into the into the things. His name was Cyril Stanley Smith, and he was somewhat of a, 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 a esoteric metallurgist, and, and he got the he 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 was instrumental in getting the uh, the weapon first weapons that that went off at of Trinity uh, uh, made. He made it possible. He put gallium. He said, "He said, well, yeah, you'll have to. They may have. They may come in the window and shoot me if I tell you this stuff. It was classified." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is anyone well, listening? You're listening. Okay. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> well, we promise not to tell anyone. No, no. I, I, I can tell you. There's a. There's some video. Um, oh yeah. Oh, oops. Oops. <laughs> I spoke to the video. Huh? Okay. Well, no, well, that's true. Sorry. But, but so, we're, are, are you? Are you of an age that, uh, I mean, working at Los Alamos, that, that you worked on the bombs that? Oh, oh the plutonium. That's all plutonium is, is, is was ever well, was bomb refined was for uh, after uh, we after except we started. I guess the the, the Germans, I guess, were, were trying to do uranium. I don't know that they got plutonium. They were trying to make a uranium bomb, I believe, as opposed to. Plutonium. plutonium is only the only use of it is it is is, it, is its ability to be compressed, condensed to where it, it, it blows up. Yeah, it goes into atomic fusion. But he didn't make the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs. I think you can. No, no, no. I'm coming way after that. Right. I can. I, I can. I went to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was in the dates. I was in the dates. I didn't realize you were just asking for the dates. <laughs> no, I, I, I wasn't sure the the, the time frame. I. You, you, yeah. I went to work in Los Alamos, 1930, 1985, not 30. <laughs> oh, that was a quite a quite a slip, that wasn't it? Yes, 1985 to nine to 2000, or I was at Los Alamos, about 15 years. I'm I'm kind of relieved uh, somehow. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to working on Fat Boy and. Um, no, I, I, I didn't do that. Yeah, Little Man. L little Man, yeah. Uh, I didn't do that. Cyril, Cyril was a metallurgist that, that developed those at the end, the, that was capability of getting there. That's what it was. Well, I'm curious. If this this could be an aside from from the, the wonderful poetry that that you read to us, performed for us so passionately, Jim. I love I love how passionately you you get your words out. Um, what what did you study in school? I mean, is it metallurgical <laughs> engineering? I was a metallurgical engineer, graduated from Virginia Tech in uh, 59, spent three years in the Army in Germany when the wall went up. That's kind of an interesting Jeez. that ROTC added. I had a, a commission, and then 62, I came back and went to graduate school. I finished the University of Florida with a PhD in metallurgy, and uh, from there went various ways, places, taught for six years, and then worked in the steel industry for 10 years, and then 15! Glorious times down where I was able to do use electron microscope to uh, look at all kinds of things at, at the labs down in Los Alamos. Oh, I, I've I've looked through an electron microscope. <laughs> Have you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How was it for you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was really neat. Yeah, yeah it was very, very cool. I, it was, I was working on a film about cartilage tissue. And, and uh, from that I went directly into songwriting and poetry. <laughs> That's a sketch. That's a sketch. Yeah, it was a moment. Yeah, it was just uh, cartilage tissue.